Hey, Lux here. Today I'm going to do part two of my look at New Sonic Arts Freestyle. I'm going to focus on the snapshot feature, which I think you're going to find really neat. It essentially captures a moment in time while you're working, and it'd be a lot easier if I show you this, so let me do that. To better demonstrate how snapshots work, I'm going to break it up into three different scenarios. The simplest way to explain it is this. Let me open up an instance of Hive by Yuhi. I'm going to mess around with a preset. Nothing too fancy here. Just messing around with the parameters for a second. Adjust the attack a little bit, a little bit of the release. Now we have something that we've sort of kind of made our own. Maybe it's not too different from the original, but this will work in the example. Now if you look to the right, top right corner, you're going to see this camera snapshot icon. It opens up a drawer of sorts. And if I press the plus icon, it takes a snapshot of everything I've done. So let's just name it Chew1. Why not, right? Now that I've done that, I'm going to alter it a bit further. And let's lower it down an octave, the sub, make it a bit grittier. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so I've made a difference in this preset, enough to save a snapshot, and we'll call it, hey, Chew 2, let's do that. I found another preset, I'm going to do the same thing, open it up, make some changes to it. And Hive has a great arpeggiator sequencer, by the way. If you don't uh, haven't checked it out, I would highly recommend it. I've messed with this enough, I think so. This will at least be worth saving in the snapshot area of uh, freestyle here. So I'm going to hit the plus button. Let's give it a name. Since I'm using the play area in the ARP sequencer, I'll just call it fifth play. And then I'm going to turn it over to modulator instead. And call it, you guessed it, fifth mod. So creative. Now, as the name suggests, snapshot. It has done just that. Our first Chew 1, Chew 2, fifth play, and our latest fifth mod. And I could keep going, saving more and more snapshots. All of this is available, and I didn't have to actually save the presets within Hive itself. Instead, I can save it right here in Freestyle. On to the second scenario, I've made this uh, much more complicated. But the snapshot feature works exactly the same regardless of what you throw at it. So this snapshot has Repro 5 from Yuhi. I think we'll just make this little scenario uh, Yuhi-centric. So in this, what I'm going to call multi-patch, I have the Repro doing a low lead sound. Hive is going to add a sequence. And I'll use Bazil for some rhythm. Let me unmute it, and then we're going to go into full Miami Vice mode here. Yes, I grew up in the 80s. You might notice I had a Brainworks plugin. This is the Saturator V2. Uh, doing a little bit of that on Bazilla. I think it's Bazilla, not Bazil. And I haven't done any splits here. Everything's just layered directly on top of each other. And speeding things up, version 2 is just obviously a different variation of version 1. Now, version 3 is a little different. You can see I've dropped uh, the Bazilla I'm just using the Repro and Hive. And the key split multi, I have done just that. I have assigned 
repro the lower part of the keyboard and hive the top part. So here's hive. And then repro will be bass. And then together. Pretty cool. Let's move on to key split multi two and see what's happening there. Just a little bit more layering. Oh wow, it's majestic now. And butterflies are mating. And tears are forming. I know these examples aren't musically stellar and they're not intended to be, but the idea is that you can have multiple types of arrangements in these snapshots. And then what you're about to see takes this to a really additional cool level. I've set up a MIDI program change automation lane here in Bitwig Studio. I have a couple of MIDI clips and I think it's pretty easy to tell what's going to happen. The first snapshot is playing. And then it's going to switch it over to the key split multi, which is the fourth. And if you didn't catch that, I don't know why, but I find this so cool to look at. So I'm going to do it a couple more times. Just watch it switch over. Okay, one more time. Okay, you have to admit that is, that is pretty awesome. We're coming up to the final scenario and that would be playing live. So it makes a lot of sense to use freestyle in its standalone version. And it makes a lot of sense to be mindful of your computer's resources while you are on stage. Fortunately, New Sonic Arts has a lightweight yet powerful sampler available called Nuance. Spoiler alert, it samples your VSTs, but I'll touch on that in a future video. I'm also going to do an in-depth uh, tutorial of this plugin in the future. And to prove how CPU efficient Nuance is, it sampled Serum, a patch I was playing with. And there's very little movement on my uh, CPU or DSP performance graph. And this is why I think the capability of sampling your VSTs is huge because now I have an intro, a verse, a pre-chorus, and a chorus that are gonna take up minimal resources on the computer. And yet for a live performance, these will most likely, if not absolutely, sound exactly how you need them to sound. And because I'm using Nuance, switching between the snapshots is near instantaneous. Opening up Nuance is equally as fast, get access to the sampler, shut it back down, move on to the next if need be. I have a uh, key split. So in this case, there's a bass at the lower uh, end of the keys and three layered together at the top of the keys. So why is it when I'm noodling around and I create these quick little example patches, it sounds like the uh, opening to Medieval Times restaurant when dinner's being served. So my next video I'm going to do is how to use freestyle as a visual effects rack. I've done one on it as an instrument rack. There's a lot you can do with effects. So like, subscribe, dislike, do all that stuff, and I'll see you next time.